Hey guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you so much for the support. Um, today we have a very simple vlog for you. We will look into the expansion of a new farmer, Mr. Andre Lewis, who has decided to expand his growth operation as this is a great opportunity in increasing his farm productivity and also as a long-term investment as he returns home from the USA to basically, you know, put something sustainable back home. Some key takeaway points from this vlog is to understand how is it that new entrants have issues with starting up, some of the challenges that they face and how is it that it's important to have a great network to allow you to develop your operation a little bit more easier compared to just starting up without having proper guidance and good mentorship. So let's tour with Mr. Andrea Lewis and see what he has planned for the future of his operation and the approach which is unique to each individual as I you know trod across the island looking at different small ruminant farmers as they try to develop a more commercial enterprise to drive the sector forward. Okay my name is Andrew Lewis and this is my cousin Michael Marsh and welcome to the Matt Jones Food Farm. We're a group of young farmers trying to bring um, genetics and meat, you know, um, population in growth to the country. And um, I know you, I know you live overseas. Why you plan to do goat rearing in Jamaica? Same way. Okay, so basically, I still live in Jamaica, but I'm always, I'm mostly overseas. I work overseas, but I, I, I reside in Jamaica. Um, I have a passion for animals from a, a younger age. I used to raise like dogs and birds, birds. and fish and stuff like that. But since I started traveling, you know, I don't have any attention to give to them. So I stopped. But now I realize that um, goat is the new thing for Jamaica. And I see how much we can benefit from it as well. So me and my cousin, you know, he know more about the, um, the farming aspect than I do. So I lean to him when I need advice and he's always here. So he um, helped me with the administration and with the maintenance of the farm. So, so cousin, tell me a little bit now how you... How is it that you manage? Do you have any trouble with communication? Um, how you how that how that we call no interaction always, work? Yeah, let's call me. I get it done. Every day, actually. I, I think so, I think a lot of Jamaican persons who live overseas in the diaspora need to see this type of this family blend with. Yes, I'm living here now over 20 years mm -hmm. in Barn and Grow here basically. But this entire community is um, family based really. You okay. know, so we're just a bunch of families that live here. I don't know why the phone is you know, so hold on there. So we basically communicate every day and then I have a surveillance and on, on the farm as well. So I can see stuff that you don't see. Like for instance in the night I can see the rat having a party down there. <laughs> you understand? So I will call him and I'll say, or one time the, the, the ram will try to jump over and the other one them. So I'll call him and say, Hey, this happened and then we try to fix the situation as we go along. So it's about um, communication and surveillance, you know, yeah. So, ready? Alright, so tell us about the operation. What kind of system you're running? Um, is it for meat? Is it for breeding stock? And how large are you plan, how large you plan to carry this operation to? Okay, so basically, um, we're doing meat and genetics. Genetics is a longer run because I need to know more about it. You know, so right now I can say, okay, I, uh, I have some goats there. Some of them is purebred, some of them is not purebred. But I mean, they're looking good. So um, the long run is that we want to do um, genetics and we want to do meat as well because meat is consumed a lot. The goat meat, you know, by Jamaican. And then speaking to a friend of mine, Mr. Um, Owen Bartley, you know, he tell me, say, boy, a lot of money spent yearly importing goat meat not even really goat goat you know sometimes cheap you know what i mean so we want to see if we can keep some of that money in the country we can provide jobs you know locally for our fellow friends and families you know what i mean and we can try to um do more jamaican based stuff and support the country you know so right now it's just for um meat and genetic you know i'm working closely with mr bartley and I have a friend around the road there, a farm that's called the Alleluia Acres as well, you know, so I will lean to her for advice, you know, when I need um, some advice. When I can't get her, I'll talk to Maki and Maki will instruct me as to what to do. So I'm learning from the farmers in the high places 
I learned from the farmers in the lower places as well. So I'm getting a mixture of both um, high and low at the same time. So the operation is based on mostly pallets, as you can see, it's obvious on the left side. Yes. However, after visiting Mackie's farm, Mrs. said the thing look like hotel. It's not say, converters into yeah, a hotel. Yeah, we say, okay, let's just start to see how we can really um, change up the thing. And then Michael now is a, he's a mason, uh, electrician, and a carpenter all at once. Oh, and a great. As well. So, therefore, everything that you've seen here is done by Michael. I only help him to move the boards around. You understand? So, and then learning about the goats as well, um, it drives me to do something better so the goats can be more comfortable in this habitat that we're trying to provide for them. Well, um, so I see you have a new one over here. Yes. This, so this, what's, what's the plan for this? Okay, so, so this new one I got from a friend around the road there. Um, I call him Thanos. Thanos. Because somebody called me Thanos. <laughs> yep, you, you look like Thanos, I mean, yes. Fit the description, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But the plan is to um, um to get a breed of the new Ben and also the boar. You understand? So they said to have a good ram. That is the the foundation to the whole um, operation. So I try my best to have something as good as this. And, you know, this is my first big boat and it look good. Even there's other goat there that's better than him. This is my goat. I'm going to start with this one. So I have a boar goat in the pen as well. Um, and we're looking forward to improve the genetics as we go along. You know, the learning process for me, so I don't think I should rush myself to get the best if I cannot care for them the right way that they should be cared for because I learned that they are a bit more delicate than the common ghosts or, or the native ghosts. So I'm trying to learn as much as I can in terms of caring for the habitat, the, the climate control, the spacing and how they eat and how they survive, you know man? So I'm trying to learn that as well. So, so that's the first um, offspring on was, the farm. It's the first offspring on the farm. And he is the, um, the son of the boar goat that we have inside the pen there. Okay. And then that's the mother. You know, I got her from Clarendon. You know, um, just as I started, you know, right? But then having her, I realized that she has a deficiency of milk. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we try to tie them out in the days because someone told me that the grass would So I tried everything that I can try, possibly. Not just the, um, the grains. You know? And then the goats that I have inside that I get from Maki, they are used to the hay system. Mm -hmm. So in this new operation, we're going to try to um, make sure that they have hay and grains. And I want to cultivate some grass for me to promote on, on your blogs. So we can have a um, cut and carry system or we can have a grazing system as well. Yeah, as you can see we have a, a block structure here. So um, I had a chicken coop here from 2008, right? I made him do it just the same. And we had some layer falls there and then a hurricane came and messed it up, right? So last year, while we were making some renovations on the house, he came down here and he opened the pen and the pen is in good condition still. That's the wood right? So we said, okay, we're going to raise some goats. So we pull it down. We got some pallets and we make the space. So I realized that okay, the goat might need more space than this, right? And then how we, how we lay the pallets, I realized the flaws that it have in terms of the spacing, the challenge I have to clean. And then now uh, while the goats were growing, the challenge we face in terms of space as well. So we went back to the drawing board and we said okay, let's invest some more. You know, I want to say a big respect to my pastor, Pastor Mills, to provide me with all these pallets. Oh, pa Pastor Mills. Pastor Mills, very good man. You know, so I explained everything to him and he assisted me in whatever way he could. So this time we, we actually pulled the pallets down, you know, so we don't have to be 
um, going back over the spacing again so mm -hmm. we have a nice space on the floor. Yeah, yeah. the spacing is much better. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. And then the bigger space, we can have um, ways to clean it, better ways to clean it. And then the goes will be more um, ventilated. Yes, you know? yes. So your cousin is the mason? He's the everything. Contractor. Contractor, everybody. It's yeah. good that you can you know, contribute this, because this helps you cut the cost of your whole operation. I can imagine. So you know, that's, that's why it's important for the family farming. Um, so give us a tour of the, 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 the older pen and look at some of the flowers okay. and we'll look at how cousin now is improving. Oh so these are some nice these are some nice boys. Yeah. So these four young ones are coming from Mackie's farm. From Mackie? Yeah. Alright yeah. Unity. This this big one, she's pregnant now, coming from a cousin of mine. Hi. This this new beyond? Yes, this Nubian, them sell me the goat and know the goat can't breed, you know. Really? It's a barren goat? It's a barren goat, but I don't give up on the goat yet. <laughs> you try with her? Yeah, because I grew up in the church. So you have, you have pray for her? I pray for her. You have pray for her? You understand? Oh and, my. And she, she look a bit different this time around, like her, her, her other start dropping and things. So. Oh, so you think? So me, you, me you think of Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> And then this is um Shark Boss. Shark Boss. Right. I hear about Shark Boss. Where does Shark Boss come from? From St. Elizabeth? No. Oh. This is a different Shark Boss now. From uh, my cousin who sold me that one. Belmont. Right? Or oh, Belmont. Belmont okay. district, yeah. So um he's one year and one month now. Mm -hmm. You know. My only concern is that he look a bit shaggy. I don't know if he's lacking something or what. Um we have minerals on him? No. Get the minerals and then you might see that transformation. Exactly, so I'm looking into that. Um, I don't know if we can run behind this also, but I'm watching still. However, I have future plans on getting um, another boar or a more reputable boar from from background that is well known, like the Magnum or stuff like that. Okay, okay. She bite me this morning. Bite you? Look for my finger. It's a yeah. cruel good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have one more year, so, so it's pregnant as well. She is oh, on the yeah, she's side. heavy pregnant. Yeah, it's her first time. All right. I just want to get the minerals inside here. I'll go and do that. Please and thanks. I give them the anti stress this morning. However, if I say um, these, we just, we just lay the pallets down and we try to fill in slots in between oh, so to, it never to, they work out too tough. I get you. I see. This was the mistakes that you were making exactly. before. Too much yeah. space. Yeah. Okay, farmer. So, um, you know. Make sure your spacing is okay, mm -hmm. when, especially when you're using the pallets, understand? So this time we just pull, pull the pallets, we try to, you have to load them onto it. Yeah, we try to have yeah, it yeah. Uh, organized, you know, and then now um, we're trying to, to um, give them more space. Yeah, so um, I realized that the height was a problem for me because I couldn't get to utilize the pen the way I want to. So this time we're going as high as 10 feet up. So we can store here on top mm -hmm. and we can utilize the space more and we can create more um, ventilated space for the ghost as well. Alright, I see you guys using local wood to help support the the flooring. Where you got this wood from and is what type of tree is this? Okay. Water wood. This is water wood and people always say that they're soft, but they catch. after we those one were still they catch down in the ground. Yeah. And then all the other stick that we use when dry. Oh, so you prefer to use, yeah, try yeah. this waterman so thing. We, and then now all this comes from the land, so we just cut it down. And, you know, we try to um, save, we're trying to conserve as well. So I invest in a saw, and the contractor Michael do the cutting, you know what I mean? So we get all this from, from the property. From the property? Yeah. So before we talk about the cut and carry system that you plan to um, use on your farm, where are you getting that grass from? Okay, so on his property we have grass around there. If you go down this side we have grass as well. But we don't have a specific location as to where we might get grass from. I know, I listen to your blog and I hear that um, 
you have stuff that we can plan, right? Mm -hmm. So we're planning to invest in that as well, you know. Um, what do you call it? Father Bank? Yes, Father Banks. Yes. So we're looking um, for that in the future, like to we have space on the other side. We, we see a lot of water with trees, we might cut them down, mm -hmm. clear the space and just plant some grass so we have our own cut and carry system. Okay. Yeah. I've been working in the cruise ship industry from 2011 until 2018 and I mean I felt a bit restricted even though it was fun traveling so I left and I started working in the US on a hotel program and based on the economy we don't know what's really happening so it's good to have a fallback plan it's good to have a plan B as well as you see I'm wearing this shirt I have a restaurant as well it is currently closed because I am always away and I'm trying to uphold the standard but I still have the restaurant and we are working on um, opening the restaurant next year, 2022. As in opening to remain open. Yes. So I'm trying to build myself more on a local base than on an international base because I don't live in the US. I live in Jamaica. I'm a Jamaican and that's, um, I always want to remember that. You know, if really things should go bad, I have something to fall back on. Now they put goats in action. Yeah, and goat in America is like show goat. They don't really eat goat in America. Or oh, if you go like Texas now, the goat them expensive. Like if you six thousand dollars for one goat, because I guess they pull the semen from those goats, so the goat have a very high reputation. But where I was, I visited the goat farm, and I mean the guy said, if I get two hundred for the goat, you have to beg them to pay. So I tell him said goat is a good business here. Yeah, he was he was shocked. He was surprised. I mean, so I try to to learn from them how to operate, how to do things, and try to bring it here. You know, not to change the culture, but just to enhance it. You know what I mean? It's, um, it's, it's always good to learn more because life is a learning process. You know?